So after looking for a while, uh, this is sort of the 3D printer that I ended up selecting for a, sort of a number of criteria. It's kind of the one that really stuck out, um, you know, that I wanted to sort of cut my teeth on 3D printing with. Um, this is a, a Finia H-Series uh, 3D printer. It's a, it's a U.S. version of the uh, Up 3D. Um, it's got some modifications to it. Uh, it's got some great U.S. support. Um, so you know, I'll go into the detail, uh, you know, a little bit more in the review as far as you know why I chose this particular one. But um, I wanted to say that I ended up getting this printer from Octave.com. Um, I was familiar with Octave as far as uh, they have a pretty quality ABS product as far as uh, like third-party filament. Um, I read about them on the rep rep forums, uh, on the up forums. Um, people just seem to say really nice things about their ABS. Um, I noticed uh, they also sold the Affinia. Um, they're on the West Coast. I'm on the West Coast. I'm in California. So um, shipping was quicker to me. Um, they also are currently running a free shipping promo on this printer. Um, so it's pretty much the cheapest place to get it. Um, I was going to order some ABS anyways. So uh, save save shipping on there. You know, if I'm gonna go ahead and, and be buying uh, third party ABS, uh, you know, why not get it all in one place? Um, that's the one nice thing about the Affinia over say the Up. Uh, the Up they don't uh, recommend that you use third party filament. They kind of try and sell um, their OAM filament only. You can run into some warranty issues if uh, if you don't. Uh, whereas the Affinia, um, they're sort of more open to that. Uh, as far as uh, allowing people to use uh, third-party filament and, and not uh, becoming a support issue. Um, Octave's pages on the uh, on the printer are, are really informative. They have a lot of uh, support downloads, um, you know, a lot of files that uh, Affinia doesn't even have on their site. Uh, the Affinia site's kind of sparse, so uh, I mean, there's definitely more info on the Octave, uh, Octave site. Um, with some of the some of the report some of the support requests that I've had, um, it's clear that Octave and Affinia sort of work really closely together. Sometimes I'll I'll email Octave and you know I'll get a response from Affinia. Um, Octave super quick about uh, their turnaround time. You know often I'll get a response within an hour. Um, you know from various people in the company, you can tell that the, you know they're they're sending emails around, make sure that. Uh, you know, whoever's most suited to answer your question will. Um, I mean, one of the main reasons I, I picked the Up and the Affinity in general is, uh, you know, I wanted to use third-party filament. You know, if you want to use like a glow-in-the-dark filament or fluorescent colors and things like that, you kind of have to stray away from the OEM filaments uh, on these printers. And, you know, the, the Octa stuff seemed to be the way to go. Um, they also use these printers in house, so they're you know uh, they have a lot of experience with using the Affinia and their filament. So um, you know if you're going to run into any problems, um, you know they're the guys that uh, you want to talk to. So um, I'm going to get into the review uh, now as, as far as this printer, and then there's going to be some following parts, uh, you know, detailing uh, different sections of the review. So I hope you enjoy. So why did I pick the Affinia over, you know, any other number of printers I could have purchased? I mean, uh, especially uh, this year, you know, there's been more choices than ever. Um, and, you know, I would say I was looking at sort of a number of options. Uh, you know, building my own Prusa. Um, sort of more, uh, more finished kits like the, you know, Maker Gear M2. Um, things like that. You know, there's a ton of Kickstarter options, even um, just like you know, it's kind of mind-boggling as far as you know, you know what to choose. Um, before I had purchased the the Affinia, I didn't really have any 3D printer experience. Um, I did spend a while researching as far as um, like what the open source software was like. Um, you know, as, as far as like what my different options were. One thing I think that's, that's really good to do is um, you know, download some of the software sets. I mean, you can download the Affinia software and play with it without an up printer. I mean, without an Affinia printer. Um, same thing goes with um, you know the more reprep style printers. You know, download uh, Pronterface or Repetier Host, 
slice or play with them, um, get an idea of you know what's necessary um, in order to sort of get printing. Um, I bought this a few months back at the time. Um, some of the open source software wasn't as good as it is today. Um, it was a little more confusing. Um, uh, you know, I think most people probably use Slicer now. Um, Skeen Forge, which is a popular uh, program, um, it's just like it was a little daunting uh, to say the least. I mean, there was there's like so many options um, that I wasn't really super familiar with, and you know, you'd look at people who were building. Um, you know, rep rep kits and, you know, taking them weeks to get, uh, you know, properly calibrated. And then even some of them, um, after that wouldn't be happy with their quality and they would end up buying like an M2 or something like that. So I figured, um, I actually first came across the up in the affinity on the rep rep forums, um, as far as people suggesting, you know, a solid turnkey printer. Um, so that's kind of how, you know, I read a lot of reviews. Um, I mean, the printer does have its limitations, but I think overall people have been pretty impressed, you know, especially with, you know, the build quality, um, sort of the software that comes with it. Some of the, you know, the abilities for the printer, like support material is, is, is probably, you know, best in, best in class on this printer uh, currently, you know, for anything under $10,000. So, um, that's kind of what struck me. Um, it's not really uh, super easy to see, but you can see, you know, the, uh, the up software is um, it's super simple. Um, you can, you know, drop things on there, move them around, scale them. Um, there's a number, uh, you know, if you wanted, well, let's see, if you want to do, um, you know, as far as like the number of options aren't aren't a whole lot. Um, but I mean, that, that's sort of good in a way. I mean, it sort of is the options that you need as far as, um, you know, how dense you want to print, uh, how you want to control the support material, um, things like that. So, um, so yeah. So I guess one question too is, you know, I mean, I'm sort of using, I'm using the word up and the word Affinia. Um, Affinia is basically a, um, a U.S. Affinia is it's is, is a company sort of run by microboards I believe which is a sort of a, a big retailer as far as like CD duplication label printing things like that um, and they just sort of gotten into the 3d printing market um, before if you wanted to buy an up printer you would have to buy one directly from up which is in China uh, it sort of has its own um, you know detriments uh, as far as shipping cost, uh, service issues, things like that. There is a U.S. reseller, X-Object. Um, emailed them a bit, um, got a sample print, things like that. Um, communication, not so great. I kind of had the more, you know, the impression that they're uh, just kind of more just a, like an importer reseller, I mean, which is fine. Um, and, and then I saw the Affinia come out, and I was like, you know, this thing looks just like an up printer, and that's because it is an up printer. Um, the one thing you get with Affinia is you get U.S. support. I mean, I think they're based out of uh, Minnesota, um, and I have contacted support a few times, and, you know, super quick turnaround, super helpful. Um, you know, they FedExed out stuff for me, um, and, you know, it didn't cost me anything. Printer does come with a warranty, which is you know you're not going to get with a do-it-yourself printer. It has a one-year warranty on it. There's you can get an extension uh, for $199 for an extra year. Um, I may end up doing that. Um, but when Affinia didn't just simply import an up printer, supposedly they made a number of, of changes um, as far as like electrical grounding on this. Um, I think that. You know, I, I went, I'll go over in the next video. Um, the extruder mounts different, um, things like that. So I think they really went, um, you know, more towards polishing this for the U.S. market. I, mean, I think they're aiming this at uh, more turnkey users, people who aren't as interested in, um, you know, getting something to print or how, you know, all the intricacies in printing on a 3D printer because there are so many variables. Um, it's kind of more aimed at people who want to just print objects. Um, probably one of the main selling points of this printer is, is support material generation. Um, 
not a great print, but um, you can sort of see um, this is basically the same thing as this. Um, and you can see there's there's basically a void, it's supposed to be a void in here. Uh, the up will automatically generate support material that you can remove you know, pretty easily. Um, it, it's kind of an interesting uh, conundrum because when I originally uh, started designing some parts, I was doing like a CNC conversion kit. Um, I'll show you here. Um, you know, I was coming up with, with something like this. I was basically doing these um, basically doing these uh, basically doing these solid parts um, it's basically what I would you know what I was looking for doing um, you know basically everything I needed I didn't really have any design considerations um, and basically this is you know this is realistically printable on an Affinia um, since I do ultimately want to open source this design I sort of had to redesign it um, to be printed on other RepRab style printers. And one of the downsides of that is uh, you, your overhangs are limited to, you know, 45 degrees. And, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, uh, for example, um, you know, that's, this is straight up and down. If you had a surface that went, that tilted, once you go past 45 degrees, it doesn't really have anything to print it on top of so you know if you if you're looking at 3d printing and you see most people um, print yoda heads uh, around the chin and the ears um, the overhangs kind of aggressive so a lot of times you'll see um, poor print quality in those areas um, whereas with the up and it's uh, or so the affinia and its support material generation um, those aren't really issues you're going to have so to give you kind of an idea of um, you know why this is useful i'll show you the version that I've generated uh, for sort of open source printers. And you can see I had to take the same, um, I had to take the same model and break it into uh, four different pieces um, because of design limitations without using support material. Um, and this is actually the piece here um, that I printed out. Um, and you can kind of see here's the four different pieces. Um, even like this bearing block, since it had sort of um, a flat surface on each side, I couldn't, and just printing a, a circle is actually too aggressive um, on the overhang up on the top. Um, so I actually had to break this in half and print them like that, which is something I wouldn't have to do with the Affinia software. Um, and what that means is, you know, if you're just doing prototype work and you don't necessarily want to focus on how how the part's supposed to be parted out. Um, it, it's much faster just to design the solid part. Like here's here's a solid version, and I printed this all as one piece uh, on the Affinia. Whereas the version that I'm doing for sort of the open source project is, I mean, this is three separate pieces. Also, you know, you've got to attach those pieces somehow. So uh, you know, I've got screws, you know, screw holes. Um, so it, it, it's kind of interesting. I mean, if you look at um, like, you know, if, if you've looked at CNCs at all, I mean, they're basically like sort of, they're not really 3D, it's like 2.5D in the sense that um, you basically have an X and a Y and then you have like a height. Like you can't, you can't go in and drill under stuff. And, you know, current, you know, do-it-yourself 3D printers or, or 3D printers that don't take advantage of support material um, are sort of limited like that. I mean, they can do a little bit more. I mean, it's more like 2.75D you know, maybe. Um, but, you know, the Affinia um, with its support material, you know, sort support material generation is, is really truly a 3D printer. Um, now, I think the open source stuff is going to come along. You know, it'll get there eventually. Um, the newest version of Slicer um, is a lot better in its uh, support material generation. But, you know, it's still got a while to, you know, still, still a ways to go. So, um, Another thing too, um, the you know one thing that also drew me to the Affinia and the Up is uh, the support forum is actually pretty good. Um, it's a pretty decent community, um, a lot of knowledgeable folks. So if you're having problems, um, you know you'll find questions there, or you'll be able to find questions that have already been answered.